Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Merrick's Garage. I had huge plans for you guys. I, the reception to my long, long video last time was so great that I wanted to give you guys more and more and more. But then reality set in and I started rushing through stuff. I got bogged down in certain parts of the build and I realized I'm going to take my time. This isn't going to be a video of me getting the axle back under the truck because I haven't got there yet. One of my objectives when I set out with this channel was to uh, to fire up the off-road community that, that you can build these trucks with a family, with three kids, working full-time, with a very, very understanding wife in your own garage. I'm basically waiting on parts. I ordered a bunch of stuff. It started trickling in. Rebuild kits for the axle. Uh, I played at the knuckles. We're going to get into that. Kingpin bushings. I got my I got the kingpins. We're going to talk about why these are important and a whole lot of stuff. So let's go get it. Merrick's garage. So you're going to see here some of the seals that I've started bringing in to get this thing dialed down. This is the inner seal that's going to keep some of the fluid inside the differential and stop it from leaking out. You see I've got the lower kingpin installed in here, the kingpin race, bearing, bushing and everything. And then uh, down here I got some more stuff for you guys. This is the rebuild on my hub. New bearings, new seals. All the good stuff. The Detroit is in. And uh, here, coming over here, I've got all my rebuild for the Kingpin. These are the Kingpin springs. What these do is basically keep tension on the knuckle itself. The way the Kingpin works is you've got the top race that is a much taller race than below on the C. And then you've got a massive spring that's under a lot of tension to keep that knuckle centered and to keep it from moving around a lot. These springs wear out, they were never really designed to be run with 40 inch tires. They were designed for the stock applications. So when you introduce a big heavy tire, you're introducing a ton more leverage into the system that that knuckle was ever designed to handle. Well, the kingpin and the knuckle, but the knuckles were so overbuilt that uh, they're holding up. But the kingpin bushing itself is a weak link. Mine was broken. I happen to think it broke when I flipped my truck over after rolling it. But needless to say, I had some wandering issues. I had some other problematic rattles and, and noises, and I think that was due to a lot of parts in my axle just being worn out. So I've gone through this thing thoroughly, and I'm replacing as many seals and bushings and bearings as I can within reason. Some of them were fine and I've just left them alone, but some of them were pretty trashed. So this guy is gonna sit down on my inner C. Here is the bottom kingpin bearing, just a barrel roller bearing. And here is the race. If you remember from my last video, you're gonna have seen me hammering this guy out. So I just press the new one in. This cap goes over the top like that, pushes up in. This sits in right here like so with this guy right up, sorry, right like that. These springs are very heavy duty, but a lot of people do replace these, especially these guys with a solid bushing. If I break them again, that's what I'll be doing too. Here's the limited slip that came out of my axle when I replaced it with the e-locker. You can see the open carrier here, and then right here you'll see all the clutches. This thing actually looks really, really good, but these are the clutches that will slip when a certain amount of torque bias is found. The benefit of a limited slip is it's obviously going to act like an open differential if there is anything that is causing substantial uh, torque shift between the drive, between the, the two front wheels but it isn't very predictable. And so having a locker that's either on or off is highly desirable. But these guys are great. I did find driving on the street that this thing pretty much locked up all the time. It took some serious load for it to unlock, but that's probably because these clutch packs look so new. 
So yeah, I'm gonna be throwing this up for sale. So if anyone's interested in a limited slip, Dana 60, 35 inner spline, 456 and higher limited slip, hit me up. In the quest for bulletproof reliability and ultimate strength, every time you increase the strength in one part of the axle, you've got to consider the chain of events that will precipitate increasing the strength in every part of the axle. So by increasing the size and strength of the axle shafts, I'm transferring more load onto other areas of this truck. Now I did consider going with some aftermarket knuckles for a long time, but then I discovered plating knuckles. And if I can plate the knuckles I've got, save some money, then that's the way I'm gonna do it. So. Here's a traditional, here's my Dana 60 passenger side knuckle. It's a great knuckle, these are super robust, but they're not really designed for all the load that we put on them. Particularly when you go over to crossover and high steer, when you're putting all the stress through the top of the knuckle, not down at the drag length where it's intended to be. So these historically will break inside at a weak point, and if these break on the trail, they can really, really leave you high and dry. So the option is, is to plate them. This is all plated. Obviously it's not welded up yet, but you can see the, the idea behind the plating is increasing strength in the problem areas. So uh, once again, Elijah's coming through. He's gonna be hooking me up with the welding on this. They're gonna look all pretty and fantastic. And I'm gonna paint them orange, to make them faster. But I'm excited about this. It's not just grab your MIG and squirt gun and start laying down welds. You've got to, you do have to prep it. You got to heat it up. It's a little bit beyond my pay grade. That's why I'm hiring a professional to do this. Anyway, it's going to be awesome. It has kind of delayed me on the whole build because uh, I can't really start mocking up axle position until I have the axle under the truck. And I can't get the axle under the truck until I have it all back together and can figure out full bump, full droop, ride height, things like that. So I'd rather do it right the first time than come back and try and fix my mistakes. So it's taken a little bit longer than I expected, but that's okay. It's gonna be bulletproof, it's gonna be bomber, and it's gonna be orange, which is the best part. Some of the last pieces of the puzzle coming together. Now that I've got the knuckles back, I can start throwing the axle back together. I finally got all the pieces, the bearings, the new races, the seals, the knuckles, fresh from getting plated by Elijah at Nocturnal Welding. Now the knuckle plating kit itself is substantially cheaper than going to a set of reeds or a set of cranes, but you do have the additional cost of paying to get it welded or your time. This is pretty critical to get them welded correctly so you're not gonna damage the knuckle itself and you're gonna benefit from the strength of putting the plates on there. Here is the plated knuckle. It's beautiful. So, I mean, it's a work of art. I, I'm very, very happy with how this has come together. I am uh, aware that it, this was beyond my skill set. And yeah, I just caution you guys, if you are looking at doing your own plated knuckles, make sure you know what you're doing. I didn't. Fortunately, I've got a good friend who does, and he did an amazing job. They are still in their cooling blankets. This is what we wrapped them in, or what Elijah wrapped them in after he finished welding so that they could cool down slowly and not develop any cracks or stress risers or anything like that. A lot of axle work the last couple weeks, getting everything prepped and back in, ordering the seals and bearings and getting those replaced and getting the Dana 60 knuckles plated big, Big thanks to Elijah at Nocturnal Welding for his skill in making these things look so amazing. I'm fired up. The axle is going to be going back under here shortly, and we're going to start mocking up link lengths, mocking up ride height, full bump, full droop, all that good stuff. So stay tuned, Merrick's Garage!